Shall I call you Weather War 101 while doing this interview? Or do you have a nickname you go by? Yes, WW101 is fine. It is the name all of my viewers know me by. What of your background can you share with us? Not to get too personal, but in regards to how you came about discovering these truths. How did you grow into this, and how long ago did it start to make sense? Are you a scientist to begin with, or a self-educated man, for instance? Again, not to get any identifying details, but to understand what motivated you originally and what pre-qualifications made your awareness possible. For me, it started 20 years ago. I had already been aware of the increase in bizarre and inexplicable weather events for some time, but just like everybody else, I didn't have any idea how it was happening. It was perfectly clear to me that it wasn't natural, however, and it really began to get me. One day I was watching the news and the weather report came on. The weather radar showed two overlapping rings plain as day, and when the storm system passed the intersecting rings, the storm completely changed. The weatherman just acted like he couldn't see it, and it was just infuriating. It was at that point I decided I wanted to know what I was looking at. Up until that point, I had spent my adult life as a corporate network engineer, and I was extremely good at it. For decades, I designed and built wide area networks for corporations all over the country, and was highly sought after. Engineering and scientific thinking in general is in my blood, and from the time I was a child, knowing how things worked was my imperative. It didn't matter what the object was, if I didn't understand how something functioned, I made sure I figured it out. This inherent ability was essential throughout my career, as the early days of networking were essentially the Wild West. It was all groundbreaking work, so encountering systems, reverse engineering how they put together, and figuring out how to get disparate systems to communicate with new PC networks became second nature. So after seeing those two rings that I didn't understand, and the weatherman's frustrating obliviousness, I set my sights on the weather. Figuring out what those rings were was the first step, which began my research and understanding of the Nexrad Doppler grid. So what was the next thing you discovered about these rings? And are they the harp rings of Dutch sense? The first thing I determined was that the rings were all overlapping, but they were all individual. It was clear that each ring had a center and thus whatever was in the center had to be generating the ring. It's almost surprising that it took me as long as it did, since by watching TV weather radar I was already looking at the source, but eventually I came across a layout of the 156 Nexrad Doppler weather radar stations across the country and it hit me like a flash of light. At the center of each of these rings was an Nexrad station and the locations of the rings matched up exactly. Thus it was the weather radar itself that was generating those rings. When I first began encountering the quote-unquote truth movement, the first thing that I came across was of course Dutch Sins and his harp rings. It really speaks to the totality of misdirection that the first thing you ask was the first thing I encountered, but I'm sure we'll get into that later. It is embarrassing now of course, but I was naively enthusiastic about getting in touch with him. What I had discovered about Nexrad was inarguable and daily observable, and I knew it would hit the truth community like a bolt of light, just as it did for me, and was hoping to work with Dutch since to get that vital information out. I contacted Dutch, spent considerable time in email communication with him, made my case, showed him the Nexrad layout, showed him video proving it, 
and to my dismay, he refused to acknowledge it and kept singularly pushing harp. Since I could prove that the center of those rings were actually Nexrat and not some research facility in Alaska, I found it very disturbing that he refused to see that and, at the time, didn't understand why. How long did it take you to catch on? Well, it didn't take terribly long after that. Although still naively, I had hoped that Dutch Sins was an isolated case, I soon found out that that wasn't the case at all. I contacted Scott Stevens, the so-called meteorologist whistleblower, and had the same lengthy conversation I had with Dutch. Ultimately and condescendingly, he basically told me not to worry about it, and instead I should, quote, point people to the sky and let them make their own interpretations, unquote. Many years later, you can see this is exactly what he is still doing. One by one, I contacted all of the other people who were, quote unquote, leading the truth movement. One by one, they behaved in the identical manner. I contacted Jamie Lee and had similarly disturbing experiences. After a while, none of them would even respond. Dabu 7, suspicious observers, all of the people who are leading the truth movement wanted nothing to do with the daily observable evidence I had compiled and that would instantly clear up all of the confusion that ran, and still runs, rampant in the truth community. Most egregious of all was Dane Wigington and company. Aside from never ever speaking with me directly, he quite literally conspired with disinformation operatives to deliberately misidentify, discredit and dismiss me and my volumes of verifiable work. Since we haven't gotten to water vapor yet, we'll have to revisit that as well. Did you find any documentation in the scientific literature that validated your observations of Nixrad being at the center of these rings, or of it having the double-edged sword of sending as well as receiving capabilities? Oh, absolutely. As I say frequently, I don't say anything I can't prove. I found all of the necessary Nexrat specifications to prove they were capable of doing exactly what I say they are doing, and that can be visibly observed every single day. Each Nexrat pulse is 750,000 watts. There are 156 of them across the country and they all overlap. This is the horrendous frequency blanket we all live in. What was the next piece of the puzzle that you noticed? The next thing I need to understand was how these storms just burst into existence from nowhere on a daily basis. Every single day on radar you can see sudden explosions of storms in otherwise completely dry air. Obviously this wasn't a natural occurrence either and I had to find a source. These bursts were just water vapor, but since they happen all across the country in various intervals, it was very difficult to grasp what could possibly be the common source. The co-opted truth community was pushing misdirection like chem bombs to explain these bursts, without any evidence of any kind of course, but that made no sense at all. After considerable searching, I had an epiphany. There was one in place, on the ground source that could produce massive amounts of water vapor. That source was the power plant grid. I dug up some power plant overlays showing the locations of all 7000 power plants in this country 
compared them to the locations of the bursts in numerous storms, and it was like another flash of light. So to clarify, what you see has nothing to do with harp whatsoever and everything to do with Nixrad? Yes, that's exactly right. Every single day I can prove massive Nexrad frequency manipulation that is visibly responsible for spinning up all severe storm systems in this country. Alternatively, neither I nor anyone else can prove that HARP is doing anything at all. Pointing at an anomaly and declaring it caused by HARP is not proof, but that is all any HARP videos consist of. Yet, if you approach any of the geoengineering pseudo-truthers with this evident and obvious reality, they will either go immediately silent, get argumentative, or even get hostile. There is zero evidence of HARP versus endless daily evidence of Nexrat, and we all see which one the truth community is being forced to focus on. There is no other way to describe this other than deliberate misdirection. Is this Nexrat frequency blanket what has changed the Schumann resonance of the Earth? I would have to say yes. Obviously only God knows how many other ways mankind is generating opposing frequency, but consider the scope of this influence. Nexrat operating at 2700 to 3000 MHz and 750,000 watts per pulse doesn't just blanket this country. Equivalent Doppler stations blanket all other land masses and countries. Once you see with your own eyes the tremendous influence of these combined stations, it's almost impossible to imagine anything being capable of having a larger influence just based on the amount of global equipment involved alone. What about chemtrails? Have you studied them particularly? Have you noticed any gatekeeping around that information, outside of the whole emission of ground-based industrial anthropogenic clouds, that is? Absolutely. Like everyone else involved in this subject, chemtrails was one of the first things I saw. They are impossible to miss and have been for decades. One reason I don't focus on them is precisely because of the gatekeeping and disinformation around them and the fact it is the other thing that already saturates the truth community. The topic on its own is so effectively discredited and dismissed by the so-called normal people and the quote-unquote scientific community that you can't even get the word chemtrails out of your mouth before someone screams tin foil hat. However, chemtrails are very real. Some of the gatekeeping and misdirection memes claim that they are sprayed to break up and stop natural rain, but like almost all disinformation, it's exactly the opposite of reality. They aren't sprayed to stop storms, they are sprayed to help create and control them. Chemtrails absorb and combine with a massive water vapor generation and provide CCN, cloud condensation nuclei. They provide the frequency controllable components that are required for the Nexrad Doppler grid to manipulate storm systems. Nexrad Doppler frequency has little effect on pure water vapor, which is the reason for the heavy metal nanoparticles found in chemtrail samples all around the world. Chemtrails provide a variety of other components as well, like frequency-activated artificial ice nucleation components. This is how it is possible to have hail fall on a 104 degree day and why giant hail is falling around the world as we speak. What is, was, since it was declared over after one magical season of shockingly heavy rain, the source of the California drought and other regions caused by then, if not chemtrails? Ah yes, the California drought. Controlled opposition claims the drought is caused by geoengineering and it is intentional. Like all disinformation, this is exactly the opposite of the truth. The fact is, they are constantly and desperately trying to resolve the drought and they don't have to intentionally do anything for drought to exist. Drought is evidence of the fact that, even in spite of constant geoengineering efforts, the controllers are still failing to compensate for global warming and the broken water cycle and are failing to get sufficient water vapor to California. As we see on a daily basis from satellite imagery, massive in-place water vapor generation is required to create and fuel any rain event, therefore the only thing required for drought is the absence of or inability to drive water vapor to any particular area. To understand California drought, one must understand how sequential water vapor generation works. 
Obviously, it takes a tremendous amount of water for storms, far more than any one power plant could produce. So, one group of power plants will provide the initial burst of water vapor to get the water vapor mass started. Going west to east along with the jet stream, the water vapor mass will pass over the next set of power plants, which will add even more water vapor to the water vapor mass. This process continues as the storm system travels east until it is pushed past saturation and thus rains down in a deluge on whatever community is in the path. The problem for California is that it is the first state in the geoengineering cycle for this country and thus has no states before it to generate sufficient water vapor mass. Although there are certainly water vapor generation means in the Pacific, they are very rarely effective at getting enough water vapor to California to push it past saturation before it dissipates. As a result, the controllers have had to try various other bizarre means of getting water vapor to California, like getting weather to travel east to west against the jet stream and spinning water vapor in from Colorado or Mexico, where water vapor generation capacity is highest. My series of California drought videos illustrate and prove this reality time and again, including the one drought-solving storm you are referring to. So the mystery chem bombs are water vapor releases then? Do they have them over the water and oceans as well? Yes, the ridiculous disinformation propagated by controlled opposition, claiming these bursts are quote-unquote chem bombs, is entirely false. They are, in fact, water vapor bursts, as anyone who understands the simple process can see for themselves. There is water vapor generation in the oceans as well, most of which can be seen along the equator, but it is not nearly as widespread as it is on land. You can't very well put a power plant every dozen miles in the ocean, can you? Exactly how ocean water vapor generation is being accomplished is more elusive than on land, because there simply isn't much video or documentation of it. However, it's not difficult to imagine platforms with WSAC-like facilities, since the water supply is obviously endless. It is quite clear there are other methods of evaporating water being employed as well, but not a great deal of evidence on the subject. Do you believe our meteorologists know about this and are silent, or are they just towing the party line like good little boys and girls? I've tried very hard to give meteorologists the benefit of the doubt and opportunity to explain themselves, but it's hard to imagine it being any other way. It just isn't believable that people supposedly trained in science, and who supposedly study radar and satellite imagery every day, somehow do not see what is right in front of them. The level of ignorance and obliviousness simply isn't plausible. They may individually have differing reasons for their silence, complicity, fear, money, etc. But there is no doubt as a whole that they would have to know what they're looking at, just as I do. I'm old enough to remember when weather used to come in from the west coast and swirl around and out the east coast. But then it was like we started getting all these little land hurricanes all of a sudden. And the movement of the weather stopped making sense. When did this all happen? How long have they been at the next rad game? 
The model number for the next rad stations across this country is WSR-88D. It stands for Weather Surveillance Radar 1988 Doppler. This model was developed and rolled out in 1988. However, there were several previous versions. Before the WSR-88D, there was the WSR-74C. Before the WSR-74C, there was the WSR-57. Before the WSR-57, there were the first weather surveillance radars converted from World War II Navy radars. They were called WSR-1, WSR-1A, WSR-3 and WSR-4. How long they have been in dual purpose use is another matter. However, I don't consider the development and infiltration of any of these systems and their uses to be accidental. The first WSR was installed in Washington. The second was installed in Wichita, Kansas. Tornadoes coincidentally started increasing in what would later be called Tornado Alley in conjunction with the implementation of WSRSs. As a matter of fact, if you watch old movies from the 40s and 50s and pay attention to the skies, you can occasionally see very early patterns even back then that are quite similar and precursor to what we see today. A comment after one of my podcasts sharing your work was from a man who claimed to have been told decades ago by a friend who worked for a power plant that they make clouds and have been for decades, 40 to 50 years. How far back has the water vapor aspect been manipulated, do you know? That's a tough question. I doubt you're old enough to remember the 70s and early 80s, but that was when this reality seemed to climax. Drought was severe, snow was rarely falling at all, and it was all critical enough for pretty much everyone to take notice. As near as I can track, this is when expansion of the geoengineering grid went into overdrive and massive water vapor generation ability was developed to compensate for the obviously failing climate and water cycle. However, the systems had already been in place and under development for decades anyway. Obviously, power plants have existed since the late 1800s and cooling towers not long after, but it's tough to say without satellite imagery of that time period when exactly the dual purpose methodology began being implemented globally. Is there any climate engineering at all that you know HARP is used for? Earthquakes? Does NEXRAD create earthquakes? As I said earlier, I have not seen any verifiable evidence of HARP doing anything. I deal only in facts and what I can prove. In my own documentation of HARP, however, I have stated that many of HARP's reported capabilities have been incorporated or are identical to NEXRAD. That would stand to reason, of course, since HARP is a research facility from the 80s. How earthquakes are being caused? and yes, it seems clear that they are being caused, could be any number of ways. Now we are off in speculation, since, as I said, I've seen no convincing proof of anything at all, but if theoretically HARP could be used to cause an earthquake, then you bet NEXRAD probably could as well. Since, once again, all earthquakes are blamed on HARP by controlled opposition, you can bet it's the opposite of the truth. From an operational standpoint, however, I would point to the same reality I did in regards to the Schumann Resonance. Would you use a decrepit research facility in Alaska, or would you use a global grid of hundreds of NEXRAD Doppler facilities that blanket the planet? Or it could be another Tesla-like technology for achieving resonance altogether. As I said, I've seen no convincing evidence for the cause of earthquakes. Have you noticed any other technology involved? There's little doubt there are other technologies involved, but evidence is a factor. However, all weather events that can be traced, observed and proven to be created and manipulated by the major components already described. There's one other daily visible major component involved, but I'll get to that in a moment. Do you believe CO2 is driving climate change and or global warming? Yes, CO2 is a factor, but no, I don't consider it the driving factor or cause. Personally, I consider it another elaborate distraction that excludes everything else involved. For instance, a power plant in 2017 puts out approximately 2 pounds of CO2 per kilowatt hour. 
Yet power plants can put out tens or hundreds of thousands of gallons of superheated water vapor every hour. Consider the amount of heat transferred directly to the atmosphere in that process, then multiply it by 62,500, the number of power plants worldwide. Which do you think has a more significant impact? Besides, it completely misdirects from and evades the real issue. The real issue being the state of the collapsed water cycle, the fact that power plants are artificially supplying the water for all storm systems, the fact that Nexrad is responsible for manipulating those storm systems, and the fact that the industrial controllers have been keeping this horrific reality from the population for half a century at least. Have you ever tried contacting someone not on the fringe about this? i.e. EPA, mainstream media, hey, local times, what are these monstrous clouds coming out of these power plants feeding into our rain systems? Have you ever brought your complaints forward officially? Yes, of course. I've certainly tried. Pretty much every video I produce, I send to mainstream media, meteorologists, etc. Typical response is getting mocked, insulted and dismissed as a tinfoil hat wearing loony, even though they never actually look at the evidence. The search for an actual mainstream media journalist with eyes and a brain, or a scientist who knows what boiling water is, continues. I live in South Louisiana where we are surrounded by water and sometimes you can see the steam rise up from the water and it's pretty impressive. And sometimes I swear it seems as if it's on a conveyor belt being sucked down the line by a hidden source. Faster than natural. Am I getting carried away with my imagination or could there be something with that kind of power? Also, I heard that they can make it fog and we also have been having heavy fogs. Wonder if it is connected somehow? Yes, this is the other major component I was talking about and you aren't crazy at all. You are seeing exactly what you are seeing, and that is orgone manipulation. In the 1950s, Austrian Wilhelm Reich developed a very simple device, using copper tubing and a water source to ground it in, called a cloudbuster. This device, when pointed at an area of sky, would draw orgone energy from the atmosphere and seemingly miraculously create clouds and rain. This seemingly miraculous occurrence of clouds appearing out of nowhere from a fixed location can now be seen on a regular basis all over the world. There isn't any question that a global grid of orgone manipulators is the fourth major component of this operation, but since this one requires almost no equipment at all, it's considerably more difficult isolating how this aspect is being accomplished. What happened to the jet stream? Do we still have one? I suppose that's a matter of perspective. It exists, but there is certainly nothing natural about its flow or direction, and it is manipulated by giant circles of phased array and Nexrad rotating frequency, which spin weather systems north and south, depending on what the controllers are trying to accomplish with any given system. If you mean, does it exist as they show it in graphics on weather reports with a giant sweeping omega loops running north and south across the entire country, then no, certainly not. How far does this climate engineering phenomena and technology expand to in the world? Are there any countries with natural weather left? Global geoengineering is exactly that. It's global. I have not found even a handful of countries that don't have all of the identifying signatures of geoengineering and it's clear that the only reason they haven't been infiltrated is because the industrial controllers have not been able to gain access and build the necessary grid of dual-purpose power plants and Doppler radar grid. Mind you, we're talking about not being able to gain access even over the last half a century. One glaring example of this is Iran. In fact, I did a video about it called facetiously Global Geoengineering is not global. The title was a tease, of course, since, as I said, it is most certainly global, but doesn't include Iran. In that video I show that there are absolutely no cyclical daily bursts of water vapor as there are in almost all other countries, including all of the countries surrounding Iran. In fact, it looks ridiculous. Giant water vapor bursts firing all over the place in every other country, and Iran is just... black. 
no water vapor at all. In that video I also show the only visible example of natural slow evaporation I've ever been able to find. While in every other country there are these massive bursts going on, you can see that over the Caspian Sea water vapor slowly starts to materialize as the area turns light grey. It's one of the most astonishing contrasts I've been able to capture to date and the only natural process example. However, it seems even that country has finally been infiltrated as well. In the last 10 years after the false flag Arab Spring so-called uprisings, which in reality were remote control regime change operations that toppled almost every country in the Middle East, it seems the controllers finally made it in. Since then it is clear that new power plants or retrofitting old ones is now producing the same water vapor bursts in Iran that we see in the rest of the region and the rest of the world. However, I'd say Iran being one of the last countries to fall to this operation the way in which it was quote-unquote opened up to the controllers, meaning the Arab Spring remote control regime change operations, illuminates more about the controllers than any other example. What is the cause of the hydrological cycle being broken exactly then? I'd say the short answer is 200 years of industrialization and pollution. It is very clear that for a very long time pollution has been diminishing the natural weather cycle and most importantly the ability to form clouds and rain. Particle emissions from industrialization are much smaller than natural cloud condensation nuclei like dust and ash which impedes and prevents normal cloud and raindrop formation. This reality was certainly known half a century ago as evidenced by the deliberate effort to compensate for it. Adding the extra water vapor to the water cycle forces cloud formation and saturation even in spite of the natural formation problems. This comes at tremendous cost, however, and creates a number of negative feedback loops. For instance, forcing these storm systems uses all available water vapor, thus depleting the atmosphere all the more each time, which then requires more and more water vapor generation. Thus the process necessitates its own continuation. What came first, the chicken or the egg? That is, the use of the technology broke the hydrological cycle or the technology came after the cycle was broken? Certainly, industrialization and the problems it caused came first. However, since the facilities at the root of the problem are the same dual-purpose facilities they used to try to compensate, it seems the efforts to compensate for it probably didn't come long after that. Isn't there water vapor that still comes up naturally and isn't it possible that it could land as natural rain somewhere, organically? As I said, one of the negative feedback loops is that forcing these storm systems uses up all of the water vapor. Even if natural formation was still possible, the natural system never gets a chance to do so in the face of daily massive water vapor generation and storm creation. In the few places on Earth that aren't completely industrialized, it's possible slow evaporation and cloud formation could get a chance to happen, but not in any significant manner. Not to keep harping on harp, but what do you say to the people who talk about the global network of other harps around the world? Surely they are not just building all those for nothing. There must be some use to them. There's much more than just the outdated Alaska facility. I say one simple thing. Don't give me speculation, give me evidence. As I said, the reason I don't talk about HARP is that there is no evidence of it doing anything. I prove every single thing I say is part of this process with daily observable and provable evidence. I say Nexrad Doppler manipulates and controls every single storm fueled by massive water vapor generation because I can show it every single day right down to the individual Nexrat stations and power plant facilities involved. All any HARP video is going to consist of is someone waving a pen around at some single radar anomaly and saying HARP did it. Why do you suppose that is? Why do you think the daily provable information I provide has been ignored, suppressed and dismissed by the entire truth community for a decade, but the unprovable and confused speculation about HARP that does nothing but make the truth community look like tin foil hat wearing loonies to normal people, not only saturates the truth community, it's the deafening singular message. 
It feels like I'm repeating myself, but hopefully you see the pattern. I once did a video on NASA's space magnet sent up in 2012 that had 4,000 times the Earth's magnetic strength, wondering what kind of effect that would have on various Earth systems. If it were indeed true, and not another NASA fluff piece. I discovered the Nazis had a sun gun they wanted to point at the Earth as the ultimate weapon, and Spacecast 2020, predecessor to owning the weather by 2025, speaks of a space-based mirror for the purposes of controlling terrestrial weather. Could either of those be the other element you were referring to regarding orgone? That which is affecting the phenomena causing the monstrous blooms? Again, I don't find speculation about these things helpful for several reasons. First of all, it is desperately important to keep people's focus and attention on what is right in front of them, what we can prove, and what equipment and facilities are right near their house that they go see for themselves. These are actionable, observable and provable things that by themselves explain 99% of the daily man-made weather processes that cycle every single day. Attention span being as diminished as it is in this information overload social media society, these simple things are all anyone needs to understand to be able to understand how the weather actually happens. If we start speculating about magnets in space and space mirrors, several things occur. One, we are no longer talking about anything anyone can do anything about. There's nothing you can do about a space magnet. Secondly, we are no longer talking about anything anyone can prove. How is anyone going to present any evidence of the effect of a space magnet? What system is there, like GOES or an XRAD, that actually shows the daily effects of a space magnet? There isn't any. So once again, we are talking about nothing but diversionary speculation. Finally, if we are talking about a space magnet that may or may not exist, or that may or may not have some effect or purpose on geoengineering, guess what we aren't talking about? We aren't talking about the ring of power plants responsible for washing away today's victimized community that can be seen and proven as easily as the existence of the combustion engine can. Speculation is exactly why the truth community knows nothing useful or tangible about daily man-made weather after 20 years of activism. In my last set of videos, I show and prove that the water vapor that became the Arizona monsoon flash flood deluge came from a handful of power plants in Arizona itself. And any Arizonan can go see for themselves. This is the kind of information the truth needs and can use. No one can go observe the effects of a space magnet. So if our materialism has allowed the unchecked growth of industry to change the alchemy of our skies over centuries now, why should we not just let them take care of the mess they made themselves, since they're obviously the most equipped to even deal with it? Well, I'm sure I could do another entire interview on the reasons why we shouldn't, but let me hit the highlights. 1. These criminals destroyed the planet's climate and hid it from the species for a hundred years, simply to keep the population enslaved to coal and oil, and to keep the planet running on the coal-fired steam engine power grid in 2017. Clearly, these people cannot be trusted to do what is in our best interest. 2. While the population is misled and occupied with delusions of reducing CO2, an additional 1,600 coal-fired power plants are being built in 2017. This will increase coal-fired power generation worldwide by 43%. Doing a lot more of the thing that caused the problem in the first place is not the solution to the problem. As they have done for the last hundred years, the only solution they have for the coal and oil problem is more coal and oil. Not because it's any kind of solution, but because all they want is more coal and oil regardless. 3. The 7 billion people of this planet continuing along in obliviousness while the planet rapidly approaches matching the surface of Mars is not acceptable under any circumstances. This species need to wake up and understand what this species has done and continues to do to this planet. As the planet slowly burns up, the people need to be paying attention to a great deal more than the latest tweet from Donald Trump or the latest manufactured distraction. 4. Finally, the premise is incorrect to begin with. They are not equipped to deal with the problem and the state of the planet is the proof. 
Even after all of the desperate deluges they dumped this month in effort to squelch rising surface temperatures, we are still entering another quote-unquote ring of fire heat wave that will have most of the country in 100 plus degree temperatures. Even with all of their efforts, they are failing to control the meltdown anyway. Which is all the more reason why the species need to wake up and pay attention to the planet we all live on. So, what exactly do you recommend we do? Besides picket the power plants and kick up a fuss, what can be done to fix this? Besides getting them to stop. People need solutions to the doom and gloom. Stop everything and hope for the best, or is there some other thing that needs to be done? How do we undo this? I realize people have the need for quick fix answers the moment they even start to grasp a problem, but we're a long way from that. There's a saying in system science, you can't solve a problem until you know what the problem is, and this society currently has no idea. For the last hundred years, the people responsible for this have collapsed the climate with a coal-fired steam engine, replaced the natural climate with the one manufactured by the same coal-fired steam engine and, as I said, are adding 1,600 new power plants to the coal-fired steam engine grid, while the population remains completely oblivious to how and why it exists at all. On top of that, we have the equally elaborate psychological operation to make sure the population remains oblivious, and as we can all see, it has been very effective in doing so for the last 50 years. While CO2 and chemtrail factoids dominate, saturate and occupy the truth community and the consciousness of the species, the population is kept completely unaware of the much more dire reality of the already collapsed natural climate and the daily manufactured man-made weather disasters that cover collapsed climate reality up. These things have to be clearly understood by first the truth community, which currently is entirely managed and kept in the dark by controlled opposition, and by the general population who face daily deluge and destruction of entire communities all over the world before anything can be done about anything. The people have to understand what is being done to them and why. Gaining this relatively simple understanding provides a rock-solid foundation and an exponential evolutionary leap in perception and understanding of this world and the methods of deception. And I have honed the key to all of this understanding down to understanding the simple process of boiling water. Without this simple and rock-solid foundational understanding, any conversations about solutions are pointless and instantly vulnerable to endless controlled opposition misdirection that has been so successful for half a decade. First things first. This foundational knowledge gave me personally a crystal clear vision of all the other deceptions on this planet and, guaranteed, it will do so for all others who obtain this simple understanding of how weather works. So the first thing we have to do, and surely the thing the controllers are most afraid of, is to make this reality known and understood. The best way to do that is with a giant, fixed-position daily evidence provided by the global power plant grid. This isn't about picketing them, this is about showing and proving exactly what they're doing. If this simple reality was known, not only would it not be possible to wash entire communities away and blame it on Mother Nature, the people behind these daily broad daylight operations, costing billions in death and destruction, would have some serious explaining to do to every country on this planet. That is the very first step, and it would be a huge one, leading to a cascade of other exposures and understandings that this species has desperately needed and been deprived of for far too long. Any other important question I glared over? I'd say we have covered the topic pretty effectively. The most important thing now for any real progress to be made is to keep it simple, and understanding boiling water is as simple as it gets. Besides your Weather War 101 YouTube channel, where else can we find you? And do you have a place where you list the documentation and patents for all your excellent research? The main location for my work, in addition to my Weather War 101 channel on YouTube, is my website weatherwar101.com. I can also be found on Twitter at WW101team, on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash weatherwar101, and on LinkedIn under Weather War 101 as well.
all genuine people on the planet are encouraged to contact me, an intelligent, respectful dialogue is always welcomed. I look forward to hearing from the 7 billion people who care about the planet they live on and who are tired of being in the dark.